Okay, in this video series, I'm going to show you step by step how to create citations according to the APA Formatting and Style Guide 7th edition. Now, there are a lot of tools and resources available to you out there, not only showing you how to create APA citations, but actually auto generating them for you. And these are amazing supports to help you do your work a little faster. But the thing about auto generated citations is that they are created by a computer program, which doesn't have the ability to think critically. So sometimes there are mistakes in those citations. So even if you use these tools, and you absolutely should, you will still need to edit those citations to fix the mistakes, which means you do need to know the rules of APA. So the major tool I'm going to be referencing in this series is the OWL Purdue website. It's a lifesaver. It can be found at owl.purdue.edu. So owl as in the bird, p.purdue.edu. I've written a lot of citations in my life, so I know a lot of APA formatting standards by heart at this point, and so can you. But when I can't remember exactly how to format something, which happens a lot, the OWL Purdue website is what I always use to help me out. So I hope these videos are helpful, and let me know if you have any questions. There are many ways of knowing and many ways of sharing our knowledge that extend beyond academic publishing and formally published books. So in this video, we're going to focus on citing sources that are audiovisual in nature or that are found on social media. Um, and increasingly, uh, more and more work that you'll be doing in school will be re referring to these kinds of sources. So it's important to know how to cite them, even though it's a little bit less traditional. The three kinds of sources we're going to be talking about today are YouTube videos, podcast episodes, and social media posts. So let's start by talking about YouTube. Once you learn how to cite a YouTube video, this is going to be a translatable format that will apply to any other kinds of online videos um, on any other uh, video sharing platforms as well, like Vimeo, for example. So let's go to our trusty OWL Purdue website and find out how to do this. Scroll down to APA Formatting and Style Guide, open up the section of the menu that has all of the details, and we're going to go to a section um, called Audiovisual Media because that's where we'll find a lot of the things we're looking for today. So as you can see, you can cite a film, you can cite a TV series, um, you can cite a music album, but we're going to talk about a YouTube video specifically. Just copy that straight into our document so we can use it as a reference. Make sure that that is formatted with a hanging indent. So one thing that makes YouTube videos different than a book, for example, is that while a book is usually published under a person's full, often their legal name, um, people upload YouTube videos under all sorts of different kinds of names, whether it's a like an online pseudonym, like their kind of YouTube name, um, or sometimes videos are published under organizations or brands or businesses or even sections of the government. So instead of putting an author name like we usually do, the thing that's going to um, be indicated here is the person or group who uploaded the video. So if we look at this video on uh, YouTube, this is a TED talk given by somebody named Tim Urban. It's called Inside the Mind of a Master Procrastinator. And so if we were following the conventions of a book citation, we would cite urban.t, right? Because that's the person sharing the knowledge in the video. But actually the correct format is to cite TED um, as the kind of publisher of this content. So that's where we're going to start. We're going to say TED. And we can see that the date of publication is April 6, 2016. So as usual, 2016, April 6. The title of the video, I'm just going to copy the whole thing here so I can refer to it. For some reason, I really need this to be in the right font right now. Um, the title is In Italics, Inside the Mind of a Master Procrastinator. And make sure to include this little uh, sub part where the person's name is referenced, because even though he's not being cited as the author, he is still the person whose knowledge is being featured in this video. So that goes in the title. I shouldn't have put a period there, because right there after we put a little square bracket, not in italics, and we write video. And this is something that you'll do for any kind of audiovisual format. If you were citing a song, you would write song. If you were citing a photograph, you would 
write photograph, but we're citing a video, so we put video. So it's just the format of what you're citing. The website host is YouTube. And we'll put the URL right here. And we do not need that. But that's pretty cool that it does that. Just chiming in here with a bit of a meta moment. One thing that I did not notice while I was making this video that I just want to point out is that uh, Office 365 seems to have uh, taken this URL that I pasted and when it gave me the pop-up of the embedded video, it turned the URL into uh, linked text. Um, and just want, I just want to say uh, that is not what it should look like. This, where it says inside the mind of a master procrastinator and then is linked, it should just be the full URL um, of the YouTube video. So that's what it can look like to cite a YouTube video. And again, same thing for any other um, video publishing platform. You would just replace YouTube with Vimeo or wherever it happens to be. So podcast episodes are audio format, um, stories, news pieces, um, you know, episodic fiction, interviews, you name it, there's a podcast about it. Um, some podcasts are published by big organizations like NPR or Gimlet, and other podcasts are really tiny things that are self-published by the people who made them. So sometimes citing them will look different depending on how fancy it is, basically. Uh, so let's go back to our Owl Purdue website. I'm just going to control F and write podcast here so I can see. So there's a way of citing an entire podcast, but we want to just cite a single podcast episode. So we're going to copy that so I can use it as a reference. Make sure it has a handy indent. So the first piece of information that we're going to see in our citation is the executive producer of the episode that you're citing. That might be like a, something you need to look a little bit to see. So let's start by citing a, a, a podcast episode from a pretty big um, podcast. One of the most popular uh, podcasts out there is called This American Life. And so um, we're gonna cite specifically episode number 755, which is called The Convert. So how do I find out who the executive producer is? I'm going to try going to the about section of this website and look under staff. And we can see right at the top here, Ira Glass is the name of the executive producer of the show. So I'm going to write Glass I, and then as indicated in this format, I'm going to write executive producer to give him the credit. The date of publication, let's scroll back to the episode again, is December 3rd, 2021. 2021, December 3rd, that's the date of publication. The title of the podcast episode is The Convert, and we're going to write that not in italics with just the first letter capitalized, and the episode number was 755. And like with the YouTube video, we're going to write the format in square brackets. So audio podcast episode in, and then the title of the podcast is This American Life in italics. This, well, I'm going to put American, capitalize American, because it's a proper noun, but then life will not be capitalized. Let's find out what the production company is. How do we find that out, I wonder? Mm -mm -mm. about sometimes it helps to scroll to the bottom because there's like helpful down here so i think here the production company is wbez chicago i'm gonna write that here and i know that because it said produced in support with or um sometimes we have to just kind of look around a little bit and see if we can find it and then just do our best to find the information. If we can't find it, then we can leave it out. And then we have our URL that we put right there. So that's for a big podcast that comes from a pretty big podcast uh, company. Sometimes podcasts, as I was saying before, are self-published and they're a little bit smaller. So let's take a look at an example of that. 
So we have this podcast called Maintenance Phase. Um, I want to cite a particular episode of Maintenance Phase. Let's see if I can find one that's good. Hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Cite this episode called The Great Protein Fiasco. Um, so this is a much smaller podcast. And so it's not going to have like a big fancy executive producer. The people producing the show are the hosts of the show. So I just need to find their names. Um, I know their first names are Mike and Aubrey, but I want to find their last name too. By going to the contact page. Aha. Just gonna copy that. We have... Michael Hobbs and Aubrey Gordon, which we will cite as Hobbs M and Gordon, a executive producers, because there's multiple. Okay. And then we need our date. This was published on August 31st, 2021. And the episode is called The Great Protein Fiasco. Audio podcast episode as the format in square brackets. And then, one second, I missed something, which is the episode number. Let me just, I'm going to go through this piece by piece. Sometimes you get lost in the details a little bit, right? So we have the names of the executive producers. We've written out executive producers. We have the date of publication. We have the title of the podcast episode. Yes, and we're missing the episode number, which is... Are you going to tell me? It's not clearly indicated here. I wonder if we go back to all episodes, if it'll tell us. List of episodes. Okay, so this podcast doesn't seem to use episode numbers, so we're just going to leave that out for now. Sometimes that happens. So no episode number here. Audio podcast episode in the title of the podcast is Maintenance Phase. There is no production company. I know this, I looked at it earlier because it's just a self-published um, podcast. So you, you can either leave it out, you can say self-published if you wanna make sure that the person who's marking your assignment knows that you thought about it. Um, and then finally we have um, This is not a very well-designed website should really give me a URL here so that I can share it properly, but it doesn't give me a one. So I'm just going to put that in and that's not my fault. Not your fault either. Okay. So that's how to cite a podcast. Lastly, let's talk about how to cite a social media post. And so this is going to be applicable to any form of social media, whether we're talking about Facebook, Reddit, um, Instagram, Twitter, I'm going to cite a Twitter post or a tweet. Um, just to show you how to do it. So here we are on audiovisual. I wonder if I can social media. No, if I write Twitter. So I'm just not going to show me how to do it on this page. I wonder if there's a special social media page up here. How about electronic sources? That basically means online sources. Twitter. So, tweet. This is how to cite a tweet. So I'm going to, as you can see, I don't have this memorized, right? I'm just looking around. I'm typing in the things that I'm looking for. If I can't find it on one page, looking for another page. Um, and that's just part of the process. So here is the format for a tweet. If the person that you are citing has a name on Twitter, then you can include that here. The person I'm going to cite, his name is Eli Meyerhoff. So that's Meyerhoff. Nope. Uh 
off E. And then I'm also going to cite his username, which is at Eli Mai. That's because people's names change on Twitter sometimes. Sometimes people go by their handle and that's how they're known. So it's important to include both. The date that it was published can be found right here, December 17th, 2019. What did I say? 17th. And then you write the content of the post up to the first 20 words. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. I'm just going to copy this straight here. Um, do a little bit of reformatting to make it the right size. And here I have size 20. And that should be italicized. So learning these two historical facts. One, the university arose in 1018, 1088 as a mutual aid society of students. Two, education arose 400. And then you write tweet, not in italics, because that is the format that you're citing. The site name is Twitter and the URL is here. And as I said before, you can apply this particular format to any other kind of social media as well. All right, hope this works out for you. Good luck.